Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the SDEP review user workshop. My name is Amy. I work on the communications team for the Rec Code Manager, and I'll be facilitating today's event. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, so I have joining me today colleagues from across the Rec Code Manager team. We have Beth, Victor, and Neil from the Rec Technical Services team. George from the Rec Change team and obviously myself from the communications team. Um, so if we could have the next slide, thank you. Uh, just a few bits of housekeeping for today. This session is being recorded and the recording and the slides for this event will be made available on the Rec portal next week. If everyone could please keep their microphones and cameras off and less speaking, it would be greatly appreciated. To ask this question, um, we're using Slido and you can access this via the QR code that's currently on the screen. If you have a smartphone, you can scan this QR code to access Slido, or you can type the number on the screen into Slido on your web browser. Alternatively, if you're using the desktop app for Teams, you should be able to see an S at the top of this call where you can click and access Slido. Uh, we will have a designated Q&A section at the end of the workshop, but please feel free to raise your questions as they come to you throughout the session. Um, so if we could have the next slide, please. So I will now pass over to Beth to take us through the agenda for today. Thanks, Beth. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this workshop on the Secure Data Exchange Portal. A brief background to today's session, although I appreciate some of you um, may well have been at the, the last session and, and been uh, taking part throughout. The SDEP has been around for a couple of years and as parties have used it, there have been a number of suggestions raised to how it could work better, as you might expect for a new system. This review of the portal is designed to understand the, the full range of potential improvements to scope and prioritise them um, and propose an implementation approach that would be most efficient. Since the first workshop, we've been refining the, the suggestions that, that we've gathered. Um, we had a, an, a questionnaire on, on the reporting um, elements, so uh, thank you to everyone who responded to that. Um, and you may have noticed that a few more items have been added to the list that, that we sent out ahead of today's workshop. And they came from the session that we ran on the SDEP for the launch of the, the CSS, the Central Switching Service earlier in the summer, and more recently for a couple of potential new use cases that uh, customers, um, that users have suggested to us. Today's workshop is to ask some last clarifying questions to allow us to conclude our, our recommendations on the requirements and um, present uh, subsequently to the relevant committees for endorsement and decision over the next couple of months. Please bear in mind when discussing the proposed changes that it won't be until we do the solution development within the change process that, that will follow the review that we'll really get into the detail of how the SDEP um, could meet the requirements. So there might be multiple ways that the system could deliver on the requirements that, that we're talking about now, especially when we look at all the requirements together, we might need to, to adjust some of them. So any specific ideas that come up are useful as examples, but the primary focus should be on the underlying requirement rather than trying to define exactly how the system should look and behave, if, if that makes sense. So thinking about what the outcome should be, what you want the system to, to do for you rather than the exact how it gets there. We'll spend the majority of this workshop in two breakout groups to look at the specific queries we're seeking your input on. Um, the requirements for the, the system reporting functionality um, and also a, a final check on any requirements we're not proposing to, to progress in case there are ones that we've ruled out, but you feel do merit being included. And then we'll come up for a, come back together rather for, for a short wrap up at the end. We've got a couple of hours available to today, um, so it's not, not a huge amount of time and the groups will be focusing on some different items. If we do run out of time or you don't get to contribute the, the particular points you wanted to, or maybe if you think of something later on, having heard others um, flat, 
raising their views, then we can always take additional points by, by email or by phone. Um, any questions um, throughout, um, please use uh, the teams to, to raise your hand. We've got the Slido for general questions um, that aren't specific to, to the, the subject we're talking about at the time. And as I said, if, if you've got um, any access emails, um, then, then get in touch with us. I'll just go to the next slide. Um, so today's objectives, I've sort of pretty much covered these in, in the intro there, but getting, um, giving you an overview of the recommendations, getting your feedback on those specific queries, gathering views on the, the draft requirements for the reporting elements, and also confirming a majority view on items that, that are not for progression. So looking at the, the first um, element of, of what the breakout groups will look over is um, what we're recommending um, should be changed and particular queries we've, we've got on those. So we've got um, 29 items of change um, that we're proposing covering all aspects of the portal. I've got around 20 specific questions uh, for the breakout groups to, to cover today um, and they're split between um, the two groups, as I said, and we'll be using a, a virtual whiteboard um, that you'll be able to see on, on the screen and, and capturing your feedback as we go. Um, there were a couple of um, things I wanted to flag just to, to the whole group um, before we, we do the breakout. Um, so there were there were several suggested recommendations for, for new statuses, which you can see um, that are in green on the screen. Um, and I wanted to flag this because it's I think it's quite quite an important area. Um, useful to get your feedback because although additional statuses would um, add clarity, they can also add complexity. So we want to walk through how uh, communication could move between the statuses. Um, this did go out in advance, so hopefully you've, you've had a bit of a chance to, to have, a, have a read through it. Um, and there was in fact one other suggestion about having a, a flag or a status for um, if you wanted colleagues within your own organisation to, to review one, so that there could be an additional status as well. Um, so I'll just um, quickly um, walk through these just so you're, you're aware of, of what the diagrams are, are showing. Um, so these are kind of the, the process map from um, a starting point and where it could next move to. So this first slide shows if you're starting at unread or read and the, the, the change to note here other than the, the new suggested change uh, statuses thereof in progress responded to solved and not solved, which you can see down the, the left hand side. The change here would be to that you could return it to an unread status. Um, the next um, slide shows where it could move to from either in progress, so it's um, underway, works underway, but hasn't hasn't completed um, and also responded to. Um, so both new new statuses and you could um, range um, the next step could range from going back to unread or or down to archived. I can hear someone on the the, the microphone is are there any questions at the moment apologies i can't see as i'm presenting no okay um the next um set of statuses are, mo are the solved and, and not solved so they're obviously new in themselves and where they could go to again spans right back to the beginning if there's a new message comes in um that would need to be dealt with and, and progress through again or it could drop straight in into archived. Um, and then the last one from, from archived itself um, is, is a very flexible um, part of the process as in lots of different things could happen off the back of it um, and it could drop back into to other statuses. So you can see from, from that overview that it's, it is flexible um, in terms of being very clear that, that what is the next step, what's happened, what status is it in at the moment, but it could also get quite fiddly. So I really wanted to sort of bring that out and, and get your feedback in the breakout group um, as to 
how you think that might work for, for your organisation. Um, so that was just a yeah quick run through of, of one of the key points that we'll cover in the breakout group. Um, another area that both breakout groups will, will look at will be the SDEP report. So Victor, if I can hand over to you to, to talk us through this section and um, yeah, do let me know as you want me to progress through the slides. Yeah, sure. So um, first things first, as Beth said, thank you very much, guys, for for those of you who completed that survey a few weeks ago on the uh, current SDEP reports functionality. I think the main the main takeaway from that was obviously, as you can see from that data on the left hand side, whilst a lot of you do believe the current uh, reports are useful, uh, there is a vast majority of you who believe <coughs> that there is room for improvement. Um, and some of those are outlined, as you can see in that in that middle box. Um, the need for more detail to help drive performance um, would be useful to see additional data items um, again to drive performance um, to be able to exclude archive cases um, to be able to discover to make cases more discoverable within the portal um, and then also specific reports such as um, showing messages that we have received that you have received but not responded to. I think it's interesting actually to see um, what the reports are also being used for currently. So there is quite an even spread between three specific areas. Uh, the first being identifying other parties with slow performance, uh, assessing team performance, and then managing open cases. So these three areas are definitely um, things we'll have to take into, into consideration when developing uh, those improvements uh, in the future. And then also one thing to consider is the the date range which um, you currently find the most useful, um, which surprisingly um, are the longer date ranges. Uh, so that will be something we have to take into consideration when storing data, um, etc. If we move on. So from these findings, we are essentially suggesting to introduce uh, three report types. The first being raw data, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it'll be a download of all of the available data, which you will be able to uh, filter and cut as you please. Um, so essentially a bit like a sandbox, um, you essentially can do whatever you like with that data. The second one would be customized reports. So those, those would be reports which you can um, sort of select your own data items that you believe would be useful for yourself. Um, and save those for later use um, as you wish. And then the last report type being uh, additional standard reports. So on top of the existing ones we have currently. And if we move on to the next slide, we can go into a little bit more detail on those. So as you can see, we have, uh, we're suggesting three levels of uh, additional standard reports. We have the high level, which as you can see, is very much an overview of the um, communication. So we have key info for managers, for users, um, just giving an overall um, sense of that um, communication. We have the second uh, category, which is detailed level, which goes into a little bit more depth on, on those messages, giving a little bit more data around those. And then finally, a much more granular look at the messages, message level report, um, which again goes into much more detail. But I think the key thing is to remember here is that whilst these are, well, these are essentially templates which we will then uh, review more so in the future with your comments, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I think now we can move on to the, uh, to the breakout rooms, the mirror board. just um summing up, summing up really i hope that uh, that was a a useful session we really appreciate your your time and your input um and neil's thanking everybody in group one as well so so that's really good news um so just going over the the next steps um oh amy do you want to do should we do q a now oh no we've got a q a slide haven't we apologies um 
we'll, we'll come to that in a sec, just a, a quick round up from me. Um, so what will happen now, we will send out a summary from the discussions today. Um, we'll be finalising the recommendations report off, off the back of this and our report will go to the technical expert panel as the, the responsible committee, but we will also share it with you um, as, as you've attended today and, and contributed greatly. Um, we'll also consider how best to share information on using the SDEP. Um, so there's some points of guidance, particularly we, we picked up in the, the first workshop um, that we did. Um, so we'll, we'll have a look at, at that. Um, and then we'll be looking at, at um, in our report, we'll be looking at um, how we think that the changes should be um, raised um, and um, the, the improvements um, progressed. So with with that, um, we'll we'll finish the the main body. Um, so if we go on to the the Q and A, I think we did have one. Yeah. So we've just had we've just had one question come through so far. Um, just to remind everyone that um, you can join Slido by scanning the QR code that's on the screen, or if you're using your web browser, go to slido.com and type in the number that's on the left hand side of the screen. Um, so the question that has come up so far is who can access the existing reporting and how? I believe that is based on your permissions within the system and if you have the permissions I think it's at the I'm going to have to quickly flick back to the user guide to confirm but I think um, at the menu across the top of the screen um, you will have um, a, an option a sort of a button um, that you can click to, to view the reports and then there, there are a standard set of reports um, and um, you can set certain parameters for some of them like date ranges. Um, so yes, if you go to tools, it is across the top of the screen um, and then there's user reports. Um, so you may not have necessarily permissions. Um, if, if you don't, then speak to your, your contract manager um about that and then you select the type of report um the the, the dates um and um the user which you um, some report types will ask you to put in a a user so that's how the, the current ones when will the reports being discussed be put in place um it depends on the the progress of the the change um, process so what will happen from now is when we've concluded our our recommendations they'll go to the committee um, as i said the the um, technical expert panel and in that we will propose um, which change proposals we think should be raised and then when the change proposals are raised that's when we'll get into kind of the real nitty-gritty of how these requirements um, will be um, taken or put in place so there'd be kind of design element um, to to, um, to confirm um, how those would be met there would also be the impact assessment so the system provider would impact assess the changes um, and then there'd be an approval process to see which would be taken forward and then there'd be the actual delivery stage so it would need to go through that that cycle before those reports um, are available. Um, I think an increase in contract manager queries um, which are the first point of contact and not a true escalation is it just us seeing that oh that's a, a useful one if anyone else um, I don't know if Amy can can people speak at the moment or is everybody muted in this in this section i think um, people are muted but uh, feel free to pop your microphones on if you would like to um, add to them it's myself <laughs> um, it's carol from edf that raised the query um it's it's something i'm starting to see an increasing and i know we can reject them um, but it sometimes feels a little bit unprofessional to keep sort of telling people to to go away and use the correct queue so I was curious really if this is something everyone else is seeing or if it's just a an EDF thing. Any anyone I else? We, we mentioned Carol that the SD uh, the contract manager channel is sometimes used when people don't know what other query to put it under. So yeah, things like um, like gas am uh, address amendments and things like that where there's no for the query type for them to come through. So we do see some of those coming into the contract manager box. 
do you can I ask just generally what you do with them? Because we use the contract manager. We only have a couple of us um, and we use it as a really true escalation pot. So we don't have operational teams that have access to it because that to us feels like it's if we've got operational teams, it's not being kind of reflected as a really true escalation point to us. Do you signpost people to the correct path or? Um, in most cases, we, we've got the same setups, just a small group of people that have got um, a o good overall knowledge that can do them rather than passing them back to teams. If it's genuinely somebody who there is a proper route and they should have done it, we might say to them, we'll do it this time, but in future, yeah. this is the correct route. That's handy to know it's not just, just us, so that's good. Um, I'm conscious that um, you know there can be new people joining and and things change and and so um, one of the things I would like to do is make it a lot clearer um, within either the the schedules and or the the kind of lower level more more detailed user guide type documentation of when you should use which process types yeah. because I've coming to this. Um, uh, new to when I've joined the, the rec, I haven't found it very easy to work out. Occasionally it's it's mentioned if this happens, do this on the S step, but a lot of the time it's not explicitly called out. So I don't know if 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 you're also used to it, you, you just sort of get on with it or or if you and your teams also find that could be that could be clearer. Yeah, I think I think that would help. Like you say, there are new people joining constantly. Um and we always signpost, we never just reject them. We'll always kind of signpost people where to go. So hopefully that helps with the learning kind of thing. But yeah, I think a, a bit of a refresher for people would be good. Thank you. Um, next one, we received second of, of this, we have responded. Um, so this is this would be a kind of user behaviour, for want of a better way to put it, um, where you think you've responded under the um, the operational contact and then it still gets escalated um, to the second level to, to the contract manager when you think you've you've closed it off. Um, it might be a bit hard for us sort of centrally to to enforce something around that. Um, I, I would suggest maybe talking to the, the contract manager when you, you see a particular organisation that that seems to be happening more from um, and or talking with the, the OAM um, because they, they can be very useful in, in kind of liaising um, between parties when, when there might be a bit more of a kind of a general, maybe a, a misunderstanding or um, yeah, some other reason why, why people aren't using the system as it should be intended because obviously if you if you feel that you have solved the query, it shouldn't in, in theory get get escalated. Any any other questions for today? I see we're, we're spot on at, at three o'clock. Um, so yes, I will say thank you very much. As I, I keep saying, please do feedback um, if, if you there were things you didn't get to uh, put your views forward on um, today. Um, and um, you know, it's it's not the the absolute end of the process. If if there's still something that that um, you want to to come back to, it's not like we're taking away today, and and that's exactly what will happen in the S step. Um, there there will still be uh, refinement stages and and build stages and testing and and uh, examples of reports and things that that you can comment on when you you see them um, kind of being being produced. Um, in, in the test environment and so on. Um, so thank you for your time. I hope I uh, hope you found it useful as well. And um, yes, look out for the, the next step. Thanks everyone. Just a final one from me. Um, we would greatly appreciate your feedback on how you've found today's event. Um, so we've set up a quick survey on Slido. Um, please feel free to submit any feedback that you may have that you think would be useful to us. Um, and yeah, thanks again. Have a good day, everyone.